Hi. This video is part of a series in which I learn about programming a retro video game on the Commodore 64 in assembly. The code I'm using is from the game Supernatural, written by Georg Rottensteiner. You may also know the game as Guns and Ghosts. This is not a tutorial, just me learning game programming. Enjoy the video. Coders, today's episode... <coughs> excuse me, today's episode... Um, is going to uh, be about two steps. Steps 31 and 32, because step 31 is basically just a bunch of levels. And uh, they are just the data of the levels. Nothing changes in the code. So it doesn't really uh, add anything to the project. Uh, because I don't even think these levels will last very long because they're not very interesting. Um, I might show a couple of them. There are eight levels uh, in total. The levels are there, I think, to test the stuff that is in um, step number 32 because we get a sort of a get ready message and a little delay before the level starts. Um, there are some other changes in, in 32. There are basically uh, what we would call uh, quality of life changes, um, but I'll... Um, I'll get into them. They're, they're named bugs by Georg, but they're not really... Well, I suppose they're unintended features. Let's uh, look at it that way. Uh, um, I'll look at the data with you first uh, as, we, uh, as we do. So I'm scrolling to the end. I'm, I, I've got my trusty old uh, meld. I'll put it in the screen there. I'm comparing step 32, which is the code we see here, to 30, which is the, the one in the last step. So we're combining two, uh, the, the, the changes of two steps. We're going to line 5,059, 5, 5159, 5159. Okay. Uh, so the changes that I'll show now are the combined changes uh, of the steps 31 and 32. So the player gets a start position, um, which is the position where he will respawn after death or uh, when starting a level. I am not entirely sure uh where the the position w was in the code before but i'm guessing it was just the the previous position i mean uh, a, a player does get a starting position from the level uh but after that it's just basically the last thing uh so now we have two variables here which just record uh, the player start position, which is a, a value that will change with each level again, but it's sort of remembered for that. It, it's it's sort of part of the um, of the level object, if you will, if you were talking object orientation, which we are not. So, um, but it's a it's as you start a level, you take the player start position, load it in there. Uh, in these variables here, and they don't change until the next level. And you use them to respawn the player. We'll see that. There's a level start delay, which is just a number of frames that we count down um, uh, until we can actually start the game. There is also now a text, which is uh, called text get ready. As you can see, it. Uh, it is a text that is distributed over two lines indicated by this character. This is not new. The uh, the hyphen was already the, the indicator to go to the next line, so we can just use the code to print this. But you will see a bunch of uh, characters here, and they are the redefined ones. So I'll just quickly pull up the... Um, 
the character Tyler. It's not in there yet. So we open the character set project and we go to the character set and you can see these first two were the bullets. Remember the bullets at the bottom of the screen uh, that indicate whether we have uh, room for bullets and we actually have a bullet. Um, a number of characters have been added. As you can see, this is a luxury uh, because there's loads of characters we're not using yet in the character set, but there aren't that many left. So if we are going to define uh, characters for a, a, a pretty level set, I wonder what that is going to look like. I do suppose that we, if, if there's memory left, you could always swap out character sets, which is possible because we're looking at um, we're looking at RAM for the for the character set already, so we can we can change that. But if you look closely, uh, these are uh, the tops and the bottoms of the text "Get Ready" alternated. So. This is the top part of the G. This is the bottom part of the G. This is the top part of the E, and this is the bottom part of the E. T, top, T, bottom. R, top, R, bottom. E for ready, we already had. So the next one is A, top of the A, bottom of the A. Um, sorry, A... And top of, oh, there's no bottom of the A because that is the same as the bottom of the R. Then there's the D, bottom, top of the D, bottom of the D, top of the Y, bottom of the Y is this one. So, <laughs> and then there's the uh, exclamation point, which will have the, this character. So you can construct a get ready uh, if you're, intelligent about it well we'll we'll see what it looks like when i run uh, the code in a minute so that's the uh, uh the player position and the and the the get ready uh you can also see that adding levels is uh as easy as just adding a couple of uh uh variables here um these are labels pointing to where the levels actually are, level 1 through level 8. Um, this is a table indexed from 0 to 7, as you can see. And these are just the level definitions, just the way we know them. The player is placed in all these places, player, 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 bats and enemies and stuff. So that's basically the um, the the levels. Um, let's have a look at what they look like, and we can also have a look at what the uh, what the code does now. Um, I'm scrolling up to the top of the code because way at the start we set the level uh, where we begin. We get the title screen. And when fire is pressed, I'm still scrolling down, button not pressed, restart, player lies, boom, level. So it's set to level 7 now, so that's the, the final level. So we'll just run the code and see what happens. Supernatural, we know this, right? And there's the get ready. Saw that very quickly. And uh, so this is level 7. If I, if I die now, press fire to restart, get ready. That's new. The get ready is new. I can uh, try and make the get ready a little bit longer. It's uh, the level delay is forty. Uh, although it looks like I can I can set this here. I can. I'm pretty sure that it doesn't work. the The, the changes in this code are a mess. So there's a lot of double uh, uh, double code in here and. Um, uh, let's just stick with the levels. We'll get to the get ready uh, later. So level six, uh, we'll see that. 
Uh, note that the level number is printed, and of course, in the real world, we start level counting from level one, but in the table, we start from zero. So this is level six, uh, seven, although we just typed six. So, oh, I, ju I jump up. You see, I I'm not really sure what the uh, what the thinking behind this. Uh, oh, I'm gonna die, aren't I? Ooh, yeah, I'm gonna die. Get ready. So that's the level. Uh, I think this was just being creative with uh, with uh, making levels. But as you can see, designing a level that is interesting and playable and challenging isn't easy. And I've always thought that uh, designing a good game is like half the success. Having a good design. Level 4. Well, interesting, interesting. It's, it's basically all the same. There is this one level that I, I think it's this one. It's the zombie level. It has a different background. See, this has a brownish uh, background with the, with the crumbling zombies. When I shoot them, poof, they go underground. They don't die. They just go underground. Poof. <laughs> so that that's basically... Um, there's a few other changes that I haven't demonstrated now, but we'll get to them next. Um, I'm going to go to the... To the top of all of the changes. Go to the first one. All right. Right. Well, I'll, I'll scroll way up to the top of the code. Um, again, we've added um, labels for, uh, for VIC registers. Don't ask me why. They keep coming and going. It's one of those things I can, when I'm programming and, and I don't have, and I don't have a really strong set idea of how I want to name some, this is naming conventions basically, isn't it? Uh, I, I keep going back and forth between uh, the options that make most sense to me. So we've had this discussion before is it easy is it better to when you program use the actual register address so that you always know in the code even if you're reading it without labels you'll know what the address is or do you train yourself to use uh, labels like this making the code look prettier I don't know it's there's no there's no right or wrong in this it's a preference and obviously uh, in this code, the preference changes. So we'll see a couple of changes where these uh, addresses are uh, exchanged for the corresponding labels. Um, now, all right, well, we, we come to the change where we just were. Uh, let's see, 428, just scrolling down. You're used to this by now, hopefully... Right, we're, we're, we're basically scrolling to the place where we were just a minute ago. Uh, level number, so we set the level number, we build screen, we copy the, um, the, the level to the, to the backup buffer. Remember why that is uh, when we pick up, uh, when we create a pick upable item, it overwrites whatever is on the screen. So when you pick it up, you have to restore what was under there. So that's why we make a copy of the screen. This could be made more efficient, I'm pretty sure. Um, we'll see another example later when we look at the get ready code. Um, I'm sure that can be made more efficient than it is made now. Now this code doesn't pretend to be efficient or good. It just works, right? We're just concentrating on getting it working. Um, now, um, the, the start level delay, so we want to set uh, a number of frames before the game actually starts. I thought 40 frames was a bit quick. Um, 
but it gives you just the little moment that you need to get ready. These are also important game design things. You can see when you load up really old games on old computers and they are from before a moment that this standard was well accepted about how a game should behave, like where the player returns. Uh, the, the player, until now, the player, after he died, he came back with an empty gun. Uh, now we get a full gun, and it sort of feels natural. Um, also, the, ge the, the, the get ready wait is a thing that you expect as a player now, I think. Or a moment of invulnerability when you come back after you die. It's just sort of the same thing. Um, we set the player to uh, the non-jumping position. This... Um, uh, this variable uh, is the index into the to the jumping position where the where the player is. the 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 jumping table is basically a number of um, a number of pixels per step that a player goes up when he jumps. Uh, so we set the end the index to the start of this table, so we're we're not jumping. And then the, the, the party just continues uh, as uh, as is. Uh, maybe we should get a look at this display get ready function. Let's, uh, we're at 433. Let's uh, remember that display get ready. Now, here we go. The display get ready function starts with setting a level delay and setting the player jump position to zero. So you just saw in the code that this part was also is double it's redundant so it doesn't have to be there if i change the the number over there it wouldn't have made any difference so basically what this does it sets the uh, zero page pointer one to the text get ready code that we just saw um it sets the location 15 uh, and 11 x and y and then it just calls display text and that will just print that text. It will break on the hyphen, go to the next line, uh, and it will stop at the asterisk. That's exactly what it does. And then it goes back to where we were. 423. Yes, 422. So we just get back. So it just prints get ready. And that is it. And it, it'll stay there forever unless we uh, we remove it. So we have to... We have to count down uh, in the in the in the main loop. We have to count it down and uh, and remove it when it's time. So let's look at the uh, at the next change, which is exactly that. We go to four six eight. We're in the main game loop. So what happens? We uh, we load uh, the level start delay value. We've just set that to forty. When that when that is zero, um, uh, we don't wait at all. But um, so when it's equal, it said game is on. That's the label. So we jump to, to the game flow control, dead control, blah, blah, blah. Oh, we load the level start delay right after. Okay. Why do we do that? That's interesting. Anyway, uh, let's get back here. We load the level start. If it's equal to zero, then we just have the game. If it's not, we decrease the start delay, and then if it's equal to zero, then we remove get ready. Otherwise, we jump to the game loop. So we count it down. If it's down to zero, uh, then we say remove get ready. That's just an interesting loop. We decrease it. What if we just decrease it? Oh, if it, and if it's zero, it goes to remove, uh, and that and that just breaks us out of the, uh, of the of the weight. Okay, and otherwise we just jump to game loop, which is just uh, not starting the game. So we're 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 uh, we're putting this in at a very basic level here, uh, you know, in the in the main game loop itself. So game is on isn't interesting. Remove game, get ready now. Hold on to your seats, right? <laughs> To remove this, the the restart message, what we do, uh, we get to that line just just very quickly because we we've seen this syntax. Let, let me just 
we prepare four pointers to the line we go to the next oh and we also do the same for the color so we have a pointer zero page pointer one screen line offset table high and low that's pointer one pointer two is the color pointer three is the background color oh the background character and uh, uh, like the backup character and the backup color. So we have a pointer pointing at the actual screen and its color, and we have a pointer pointing at the at the backup and its and its color. And then we load the backup and store it. And uh, you know we <laughs> we load the backup color and we store it to the screen color. And we load the backup character and we restore it to the screen character. And we do that ten times. Uh, we increase y, we compare it to 10. If it's not equal, we replace another character. So we get 10, 10 uh, characters on the first line. And when we've had 10, we transfer y, which is then 10 to a. We add 30, so it gives us 40, which is exactly one line lower. And then we do the character we place on the second row and we do that for 10 characters and then jump jump back to game loop now if, if this is a very very um pragmatic approach i mean this uh is in line with our rule of getting it to work without thinking too much about it right <laughs> i'm i'm pretty sure we could have done this more efficiently what i would have done uh, and, and, and it's probably more of a memory waster. Is just uh, keep a backup of those uh, twenty characters, and and replace those. Although perhaps that would have yielded the same amount of code to get them, you know, to to get it back. I, I I'm not sure that get ready could have could have uh, overwritten anything. Right? It could have overwritten. Uh, something that we pick up could have overwritten a bullet. We would have we we would have had to replace it by the bullet and not the original character. How, how about that? So, anyway, it's a load of code to get back what we um uh what we had under the under the get ready. So that just thinking of oh let's get a let's get a get ready on the screen. Let's do it with characters that yields all of this to to fix it when it's gone so anyway we remove it and we go back to the uh to the game loop that's basically how it works but then oh wait a minute so we load the start level delay and if it's not zero we go to the game loop which is back up here. And if it is zero, we go to object control and check collision. So what's up with that? Hold on. So what could have happened is that during dead control, um the get ready is set uh sorry the during dead control yeah the 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 level start delay is set to a value so that we want the level to 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 delay so and we test that right after dead control so we immediately go back to waiting until it's over for only for us to Get back. So after in the in the dead control, when the player dies, that's the only point where we can where, where we can even get one of those um, uh, start delays. So that's why we we uh, we do that here, and we have to load it into the accumulator to even do the test. So so that is that. Um, I think we've had most of it. Oh. Um, 471 
which is in uh, this in an IRQ. We don't need that. Force, for, uh, sorry, 741. Game flow control, 741. Go to next level. Oh, all right, all right. Go to next level, says display get ready. And display get ready sets the value. So anytime you call this function, the uh, that uh, weight value is set. So even after this function, we can we can get a we can get a weight. And this game flow control is called once every frame. So uh, or at least when the uh, after the after the weight frame, I should say that. Right, right. Okay, here's a bug. That we that I'm sure nobody uh, knew about. Also, it, it, we have talked about it before, and this has to do with the items. Um, let's see. We're going to scroll to eleven fifty four. Eleven fifty four. Dead control. Okay. So we die, and there's the thing. When we die, uh, we want all of the objects that were there to disappear. We, have, we want to remove them. There was a to-do here. We spawn at correct position, so that we, we didn't really do that. We just spawned at, uh, at the top left corner of the screen every time. Uh, which was an arbitrary lo location because that could have gone wrong. But what is new here is the remove all items. So after we've died, there's this replace, removes, remove restart message. Okay, okay. See this code? It's exactly the same code, but it's now for the restart message. Do we, we press fire to restart? This is the code that removes them. Uh, removes that 10 characters again right it's, it's exactly the same code only we compare with 32 here oh okay okay well that's funny okay uh remove items so when we die we have to remove all the items so remember that there is a uh there's a table that has items Every time we want to place an item, we go through this table looking for a place for a, an available slot, basically. And we find it by finding uh, the place in the table that has item none. Item none is just no item. So we go through all the items. Uh, we, we look at all of those that are not item one, because if there, if there are item one, we don't have item none. Sorry, we don't have to do anything. Otherwise, we have to remove uh, the item. So we load item one. We store it. item none. Every time I say one, I mean none. We load the accumulator with item none and store that in the appropriate place in that table. And we remove the item image. And Y points to the uh, to the item. This remove item image isn't new. We've had we've uh, we've had that for for a while. Uh, remove next item is just increase the y uh, compared to the item count. How many items can we have uh, maximum? Um, and otherwise, we just remove the next item. We're done. We refill the shells. So this this is new as well. Uh, uh, after we've died. We want to come back with a full gun because in heaven we get bullets, apparently. So what we do, uh, load X to zero, we load A with two, we store in the location where we have our bullet display, so we store the color two there, we load seven and we 
store. That's the uh, oh. What is this? We increase X and we compare with the player shells max. Refill shell. I mean, the the player shells max is the amount of bullets a player can have because the game works like this: is you have pick up, you start with two bullets. Like you can have two bullets, but you you may not have them. You have to actually reload, and then you can extend your amount of bullets. So this goes to the amount of bullets that we ma we we can have, and in order to give them the filled look, they have to be this color, but two and seven. Uh, I mean, the different colors for the top and the bottom. Yeah, because this is line 23 and this is line 24. And uh, we load the this value, this player shells max, which is the maximum number of bullets that we can have. And we actually store this value in player shells, which is the actual number of bullets that we have. So in this loop, we color all the bullets filled, all the bullets that we have at the moment. And we actually set the data to reflect the fact that we have all these bullets. And then we respawn at the correct position. So now we load this start position, uh, X and Y, put them in parameter 1 and 2. Um, player type, sprite active, and then we call calculate sprite position from character position. Because... This function, we've already uh, discussed this as well. It converts the X and Y positions, which are much coarser, uh, to actual sprite positions. So that's pixel positions. And we store this. But we have to do that because we're moving the player to a specific position. So we do that. And all of this is the same. We enable the sprite, blah, blah, blah. This is really old code that hasn't changed uh, in a long time so uh, oh yeah uh, we we set where are we 1200 mm, okay this yeah x is zero x is the uh, is the sprite number and the player number is um, is zero we can see that calculate sprite oh see if I hover the um, the mouse over the label, it'll show me the the zone text that is there, and you can see as a pop up, and you can see X. Oh, I can't point at it, but X is sprite index, and the player sprite is zero, so that works out. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have some changes there bit table this is just for the player now at this point yeah okay now that we have x set to zero in previous versions it used to say this as well but uh, this with x equals zero is the same as this so it's basically cleaner to write it that way and check this out, right? We've died, right? And 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 we're 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 doing all of this. So, and then he thought, oh, we have to get the uh, uh, the the get ready uh thing in shot. So, what happens here? He has all of the code that he's made this subroutine for. And he copies it again. I think this is like the second or maybe the third time that we have this code. He could have just called um, the routine that he that he wrote. But I suppose he just... Uh, I mean, it's an oversight. We, this is completely unnecessary. This is what I meant when I said this code is kind of a mess at the moment. <laughs> it works, but it could be better. Um... Oh, right. There was another um, possibility. I've not seen it happen, but I, I suppose it could have. 
Um, items were, um, I mean, we, we could have, the, I'm scrolling down to the next uh, change. We could be in the situation where items were spawned uh, in the border of the screen and not, I mean, uh, you know, outside the, uh, the, the play field. So in the spawn item function, um, we've added some checks to keep the item in, in bounds. Now these are the bounds, uh, we're all, we're talking all character positions. So, uh, item position X, and this is where we check if, uh, you know, we compare it to 37, if it's, uh, uh if the result is minus then that means that the position was okay, so we don't have to do anything. And otherwise, we set it to the maximum position. 37 is the maximum character position that we can have any any item at. So this is sort of a, a limitation. And we need one on the... Um, oh, apparently we we cannot go lower than uh, than the left extreme position because we don't check for that we just check the uh the outer bounds because this is what we do here we we take the the y position we compare it to 21 which is the lowest row number um we do the same we do a compare basically we subtract this value from whatever is an a if if the result uh, we compare 21. I think this is a bug as well. If it's not equal, then y is okay. If it's not equal. So this should probably also be BMI. So I, I think this is a bug. We'll, we'll be seeing this one again. Anyway, then we restore it to 20. So not 21, we restore it to 20. Oh, he's checking it for 21. Still, the, the, the branch not equal because this is checking if it is it, if it's exactly 21, you know, it, it, it could be 25 and then this check will fail. Anyway, uh, uh, this is an attempt to get the X and the Y positions for each uh, object to stay within the, in the bounds of the play field. And then all of the changes that we see, uh, are just, uh, uh, I'll get one so that you can see what I mean. 34, uh, 34, 32, where are you? Right. Fixed bright Y position is now this and no longer the, uh, the actual register. So as you can see, if you were learning uh, the VIC-2, then you would want to know that this is indexed from D001 uh, because now you you cannot tell by just looking at the label. Now, this IDE helps you because you can just hover your mouse over it and you can see both the hex and the decimal values. So in this IDE, I think this is the best way to go because you can always see all of the numbers and still have a nice looking uh, piece of code. Um, the get ready, we'd already seen that. Oh yeah, we have a, a display level number call added somewhere. Uh, I, I don't think we had the display, the, the level number displayed, but that's just a call to that. What's this here now? Oh, right. Yeah, and, and putting the player in the right position. Yep. Is not player. Oh, this is a new label. Oh, let's, let's have a look at this. 3854. Because there's another place, 3854. There we go. What are we doing here? Oh, we're placing objects. Is that it? Level. Oh, this is the build... Oh, of course, this is the build screen. 
Let's just see what we're uh, 3854 level level object. We're placing objects here. Find empty sprite slot, no free slot. And this is new. If the type is player, we compare the type player. If it's not player, then it's not player. If it is the player, we just set the... Uh, oh, see what we do here? Right, right, right. We're reading the level data here, and we're building the level. So this is the point at which we read from the level data what the intended player start position is. So basically, uh, when we're creating all the, all the, the objects, which are the enemies uh, uh, and the players... We check, you know, if we're looking at the player, then the the X and the Y positions that are there are supposed to be saved in these values for later use. See, so that's um, that's how that works. And there's another, there's a 4377. There was a, a small change. 437, oh God. 4377, display text. 4377 display text now uh we load the character that we want to print if it is zero we skip the character so i don't know what this is for but this is to prevent us from printing characters that are zero beats me it's 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 to to catch something at least i mean uh, a, a a zero character wouldn't make any sense uh and and i don't mean the number zero but i i, I mean the uh the actual hexadecimal code zero so if we had a text here and it oh like oh like here like get ready g e t skip r e a d why ready exclamation point so apparently for this for zero skip character oh that's funny skip character skip character increase y oh that's that's funny uh zero becomes the space that's <laughs> that's what happens here you couldn't print spaces apparently <laughs> So we can now use, uh, we can print spaces, but we don't want to uh, define a character for space every time. So we use zero. And if we use zero, then that becomes a space. That's how that works. And that's how the whole thing works. So that was steps 31 and 32. Uh, we fixed some bugs. We have some new levels that we're not going to keep, I think. And we have the nice get ready and, and, and all the new quality of life updates in the, in the, in the game. So uh, let's head for the next step and uh, I don't know what it's going to be yet but we'll see you next time. Bye bye.